Hi. Originally I decided not to make a video about the release of Blender 4.1. Last month I took a look at the release notes and frankly it was about as interesting to me as one of those Hallmark Christmas movies. However, for the last two weeks I've been using the beta version of 4.1 and I've noticed four or five changes and new features that I think definitely need to be discussed, so I've decided to make the video. Although, you know that because this is that video. So anyway, let's just jump into Blender and take a look at some of these changes. So this first feature is going to get a lot of people excited if they use geometry nodes. If you do use geometry nodes and you use very complex setups, you'll probably know that by the time you get to the last nodes in the tree, often the changes you make are very sluggish. And the reason for that is because every single node in the tree has to be calculated for every change that's made. Blender doesn't know if you've made a change here until it recalculates everything. Now that's obviously very inefficient. What would be nice if we could tell Blender, all of this stuff here, I haven't changed, right? Just make the changes from this point onwards. And we can do that now. We have this new node called Bake. And if we save the project, because everything in the Bake gets saved to the Blend file itself, we can hit Bake over here. We can make our changes. And if this was a complex setup, this would now be faster. And you'll see here, if I change this number to like 50, nothing happens because Blender is not trying to calculate any of these nodes. Of course, if we did want these nodes to be calculated, all we'd have to do is get rid of the bake and we can make changes back over here again. Now, the cool thing about this is it works with animations as well. So you could, for instance, do a physics anim animation using the simulation nodes, and then you could make changes to those meshes after the simulation and you wouldn't have to calculate the simulation all over again because it would be baked down. I've wanted a node that does this in the material nodes for years. So I'm hoping and praying that we get this in the shader editor eventually. But for now, this is a very cool and a really slick implementation that's also very, very fast. Now, I don't want to sound too cynical, but this next feature is one of those things that Blender probably should have been able to do 15 years ago, but I'm not going to complain because it finally can. We can drag and drop objects straight from the operating system into the viewport. If I just drop this under here and click import because I don't need to change any settings, we bring our monkey head object into the scene. Hello fucking Lugia. Well done to whoever implemented this. This is great. Like. It doesn't, apparently at the moment, it doesn't support any of the importers that were made with Python. So it doesn't support FBX at the moment, and it doesn't support Gliffy, Gliffy, uh, the one I use all the time, GLTF 2.0, terrible name. It doesn't support that, but it does do SVG, it does STL, it does Alembic, it does OpenUSD, and eventually I'm told it is going to support all the other types as well. Well done, big well done to whoever's implemented this. It was sorely needed. No longer are we ever going to have to go like file, import, remember exactly what type of file you've just downloaded. You can just drag it in. The next thing I want to talk about isn't really a feature. It's more correcting a mistake that was made in the last version of Blender. You see, in Blender 4, if you have a point light like this and you think the shadows are too sharp, you can increase the radius and you get smoother shadows. The problem is if you have any objects that interact in, with the circle, Blender basically treats these objects like they are inside a light source and everything gets blown out and it looks completely nasty. And this is now being fixed because there's a soft fallout option. If we turn this on, Blender will basically work the way it always used to work before Blender 4. Now we have a nice smooth light transition and it's no longer acting like the monkey head is inside the light. Now this is going to be turned on automatically every time you add a light source in Blender. Also, if you open up a project that was made before Blender 4 in 4.1, this is going to be turned on for all your light sources. So if you have a project from like say Blender 4 and you want this horrible nasty look for whatever reason, you're going to have to go through your point lights and you're going to have to turn this off. Just something to be aware of, but because it's kind of a breaking change, I thought it was worth mentioning. If you're anything like me, then you might use the Musgrave node all the time when you're making materials. I constantly use it to add imperfections and bits of extra detail when I'm making materials. But pour one out for the Musgrave node because it's died, or at least it's been made redundant. So all of the things that the Musgrave node used to do have effectively been taken over by a new better version of the noise texture. 
If we load this noise texture in here, you can see that it looks exactly like a regular noise texture would. But if we turn off this normalized toggle, then now it looks like Musgrave and it can do all of the things that Musgrave normally does. We have all of the same settings that we have here for like multifractal and things like that. And the cool thing about this is if you open up an older version of Blender that does have Musgrave nodes in it, Blender will automatically set it up with the correct settings so it looks exactly the same as far as I understand it anyway. So that's another one of those things that might put people off if they open up 4.1 and can't find Musgrave. This is why you can't find it. It's now the noise texture. Blender comes with two different denoising options. There's the optics denoiser from Nvidia and this open or the open image denoiser from Intel. Now, a lot of people prefer the open image denoiser because they think it gets better results. But the problem that's always had is it's CPU based, which means that it's very slow. If I try to move around the scene here, you can see that it's very jittery and it's slow to the point where by default in the viewport Blender uses optics but not anymore because we now have this option which will be turned on by default for use GPU and it's now GPU accelerated and you can see the difference here if I move around it's really really fast and it does an absolutely incredible job of cleaning up the noise and doing it quickly so for a scene like this it comes in absolutely perfect the only time you might want to turn this off is if you have a GPU that has very low uh, VRAM or you have a scene that takes up a massive amount of GPU usage, then you might have to toggle that off. But otherwise, it's something that you're going to want to turn on if you're using it in the viewport and in your final renders. Now, I've done a test on this scene and it was saving 5 to 10% on every render just for not having to calculate on the CPU or the denoising for every frame. The Blender scene that you're looking at right now is the result of my new course, the Interior Masterclass. Over the course of about seven and a half hours, I go through from start to finish and show you my exact process for making this lovely, realistic interior scene. This isn't a follow along tutorial where I expect you to actually do what I've done to get the same result. It's more of a workflow tutorial where you can see all of the different tips, tricks and techniques that I use to actually build realistic interior spaces just like this. We start off with obviously the basic things like building the walls and the furniture but we get really into the nitty gritty of stuff as well for extra realism so by the end we're adding stuff like steam and stains on the inside of coffee cups. The course also comes with this huge pack of assets that are really handy if you regularly make interior scenes. We have uh, lots of different options for light bulbs, there's door handles, there's switches, all of the sorts of things that you constantly have to model if you work on interior spaces. There'll be a link in the description where you can find out more about the course. I would highly recommend that you check it out if you're interested in interior modeling or increasing your Blender skills in general. So that just about does it for Blender 4.1. If you found anything in this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you could slap a like on this video. And if you're not subscribed, hitting the subscribe button couldn't harm either. I'll see you guys around in a couple of days. Until then, take care.